Hey, hello physical science. We're going to jump right in now with our last section of chapter 13 and this section is titled buoyancy. So I'm pretty sure most of you in your life have heard this term and probably know what this term is. Um, my most general kind of quick and easy definition would be that buoyancy basically has to deal with whether something is going to sink or whether something is going to float uh, within water is pretty much the main thing that we usually focus on with buoyancy. So we're going to explain how this relates again to the overall theme of fluid pressure um, here um, throughout this section. So buoyancy is our main term for this section. So our example here, if we look over to the picture on the right, is the forces from pressure acting on the bottom of this golf ball are greater than those on the top and this produces a net force called the buoyant force that acts upward on the ball. So when this ball is dropped in, there's a greater pressure acting uh, pushing up on the ball and that is called the buoyant force which is the upward force so this will make more sense as we dive more into this section but just know this picture is going to probably show back up here in a little bit so first thing is we're going to what is the effect of buoyancy on the apparent weight of an object and so buoyancy uh, just before this will kind of help us make more sense because this is kind of again the big overriding question that we're going to answer um, but buoyancy is the ability of a fluid to exert an upward force on an object placed in it. So if we um, drop, I don't know, a solid rock into a bowl of water, again, is the <clears throat> fluid going to be able to exert an upward force on that rock, or is the rock just going to sink down to the bottom and overcome that buoyant force? So buoyancy results in apparent loss of weight of an object in a fluid, and again, we will explain what that means here momentarily. So every object in a fluid experiences buoyancy. So no matter what, if you're an object dropped in a fluid, you're going to experience buoyancy. So water pressure increases with depth, which we already discussed. So forces pushing up on the bottom of the object are greater than the forces from the pressure pushing down on the top. So this upward force, which acts in the opposite direction of gravity, is called the buoyant force. So no matter what, when you're in a fluid, there is a force acting upward on you opposite the direction of gravity remember we've said gravity acts downward so when you're in a fluid the opposing force of gravity is our buoyant force in this upward force that acts in the opposite direction of gravity so that's probably a pretty important term to write down right there and according to Archimedes principle so this is going to again dive more into the buoyant force the buoyant force of an object is equal to the weight of the fluid that is displaced by the object. So I would definitely write this down. And the word displaced kind of just means moved out of the way, kind of gets rid of it, things like that. So our, a good example of, again, this Archimedes principle is a submerged object pushes aside. So that's kind of another uh, term for displaced there, pushes aside or displaces a volume of liquid equal to its own. So a floating object displaces a volume equal to the volume of the part of the object that is submerged. So my example that I would give for this is we've probably, we've all seen this before. Let's say you, um, you want to take a bath. Again, you probably haven't taken a bath in a really long time, but when you're younger, you always took a bath. So if you filled the water up to just below the very brim of the tub, and then you sat in, uh, you probably noticed that um, you'd probably push some water over the side. That is because you displaced the amount of um, the amount of fluid that was equal to the volume. And again, it's probably not equal to your full volume, just equal to the part of the volume that you submerge. So then if maybe you notice that if you would put your whole entire body under water, that even more fluid would probably, even more water would spill over the side. So that's kind of an example of what is Archimedes' principle is saying here. So a simpler example would be, I don't know if you fill up uh, a soda bottle all the way to the brim with water and then let's say you just try to drop your pencil in there. You're going to notice that if you drop your entire pencil in there, some of the water is going to squirt out onto the side. So that's Archimedes principle. The force of an object is equal to, or the buoyant force of an object is equal to the weight of the fluid that is displaced by the object. So that's Archimedes principle. And we'll do a couple examples of this in class about how you can actually measure uh, the weight of something without actually knowing the weight just by measuring the amount of fluid that it displaces. So 
Now a big thing with buoyancy is how to determine if an object is going to sink or float in a fluid. So if an object is less dense than the fluid it is in, it will float. If the object is more dense than the fluid it is in, then it will sink. So hopefully that's not anything new for anyone that's not blowing anybody's mind with that one. So we should all know that. And when the buoyant force is equal to the weight, an object will float or will also will have something that is called it is suspended. So when the buoyant force is less than the weight, then the object will sink. So we will look at examples of those here uh, um, within this section. So density and buoyancy just kind of make more sense of those two statements that were just made. So two forces act on every object in a fluid, weight and the buoyant force. And the force of gravity equal to the object's weight acts downward on the object and the buoyant force equal to the weight of the volume of the displaced fluid acts upward. So gravity and buoyant force are always struggling uh, when an object is in a fluid. They're always fighting against one another and that's going to determine whether an object is suspended, or whether an object will sink, or whether an object will float. So an object that has the same density as the fluid it is in, that it is submerged in, will be suspended so it will float at any level in the fluid. So the buoyant force acting on the suspended object acts e exactly or I'm sorry, the buoyant force acting on the suspended object exactly equals the object's weight and submarines and some fish are able to suspend themselves in water partly by adjusting their density. So you notice the fish in my fish tank don't just hang out at one level. They're not just stuck at one level. They have this little air pocket inside called a swim bladder that they can fill up with air. So that air makes them um, makes them a little less dense, it kind of spreads out, it expands, and then they'll rise to the top, then they can let that air out, then they become more dense, and then they can sink back down to the bottom. So when, and we're going to see pictures of all these suspended sinking and floating. So when you're suspended, the buoyant force is equal to the force of gravity. They have the same density. And so if something is going to sink, um, and they just kind of give an example here. When a ship's weight becomes greater than the buoyant force acting on it, the ship will sink. So when the weight is greater than the buoyant force, an object will sink. It doesn't just have to be a ship. And as a sinking ship takes on water, the ship displaces less water, and then the buoyant force will therefore decrease, and then it will sink down to the bottom. And then floating. Uh, so a solid piece of steel will sink in water. However, a heavy steel ship will float because the shape of its hull, so that's just part of the ship, I and mean, we'll talk about that in class as well. So the hull is, sha is shaped so that it displaces a large volume of water, which will then create a large buoyant force, and that allows um, the ship to float. So that's another good real-life example that's mentioned in this chapter. So we mentioned how planes fly, how ships float, um, and a lot of interesting topics within um, uh, pressure and fluids. And so uh, just to kind of make this stuff make a little more sense, kind of break it down to simpler. So weight and buoyant force will determine if an object sinks or floats. So this object, the weight is greater than the buoyant force acting down, so then the object will sink. And these ones, you can tell the lines, the weight and the buoyant force are just about equal. And this is what it means to be suspended. It can float at any level. So it might float up a little bit higher, might float up a little bit lower. But when they are equal, um, that is when an object is suspended. And then on our last one, we have a block of wood. The buoyant force is greater than the weight acting down, and that for, therefore the object will float. So that's basically all these three things were just summed up in a simple picture right here. And then objects also float more easily in dense fluids. So the denser the fluid is, the greater is the weight displaced. So therefore the greater displaced weight results in a greater buoyant force. And that's, that is why it is easier for a person to float in a very salty water. So the dense salty water produces a larger buoyant force when displaced by the person's body. So when you get in there, um, again, it's just greater buoyant force. It pushes you up easier rather than just regular fresh water. And then kind of the same thing works with these ships. The exposed green and red stripes on the ship's hull indicate that the ship is riding high in the water. If a cargo ship were completely loaded, it would need to displace more water in order to float. So I know went through this a little bit faster, but we're going to do some examples in class to make this stuff a little more uh, kind of easy to understand. But I think for the most part, uh, this shouldn't be any too new information to you guys. So um, that is actually it for Chapter 13. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.